Welcome to Asian Quick Take, I am Jacob. As global de-dollarization gains momentum, gold is emerging as a major competitor to the US dollar. With the reconciliation of Middle Eastern countries and reduced oil production by oil-producing nations, the petrodollar's position is being challenged. In this scenario, the dollar's presence among Middle Eastern countries and US allies is already waning. Furthermore, the U.S. central bank crisis and the possibility of a historic and short-lived default have eroded global confidence in the dollar. As a result, there has been a growing trend towards de-dollarization worldwide, with gold leading the way. For years, central banks worldwide have purchased significant quantities of U.S. treasuries, but the real yields on many of these bonds have been meager or even negative. At the same time, U.S. treasuries have become a high-risk asset due to the risk of default. China is following in the footsteps of global central banks by accelerating the liquidation of U.S. debt and replacing it with gold. China's gold reserves have risen for the fifth consecutive month, indicating that gold is gaining ground in the international reserve asset space. Recent reports suggest that gold has become increasingly important, while the importance of the U.S. dollar and U.S. treasuries is declining. China is promoting the yuan's market share and pricing power function in the global commodity settlement and gold trade space. China's allies, such as Brazil and France, are now using the yuan as an alternative to the dollar for trade settlements, ending their reliance on petrodollars. France has completed its first trade order for liquefied natural gas from the UAE, signaling the yuan's emergence from the shadows and into the spotlight. Wait a second. This development opens the door to the possibility of settling more commodity. Call all y'all by Shem Yahushua, all praises and glory to Yahweh. By Shem, all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahushua. Double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect, wherever you at. Shalom. And I want to do this real quick. This is going to be a Exhortation through the spirit of Yah by Shem Yahushua, Lord willing, you'll be edified. And as you can see, um, amen, we're living in some exciting times and we see power shifts. This is what we're seeing. We're seeing power, a power shift. And we see that Babylon the Great is slowly declining its power. And we see that the allies, the U.S. allies, they're turning, <laughs> they're turning their backs, man. Slowly but surely, they're turning to what? Like as you see right here, this is the French president with the Chinese president. They have, they have came together to buy gas and to use the yuan for energy. But wait, France is an ally of Babylon the Great. Now. If I recall, you know, if if I'm beefing with somebody, he's my enemy, and then I got a friend of mine that, you know, we kick it, we go to the bar, get drinks, politic, chop it up, you know what I mean? Swell guy, grew up with him, man. It's my best friend right here. And I find out that he's talking to my enemy, you know? befriending my enemy being cool with my enemy what does that make what, what is what does that make him come on man because now the world sees who babylon the great is the world is slowly even the allies this is why revelation let me see let's get it real quick and i'm gonna come back to isaiah 24 i'm gonna come back to isaiah 24 because this place is slowly the, is the, is on its decline, and um, this is just the beginning, you know, and this is why the Holy Father said, Revelation seventeen, let's get it, verse sixteen, and the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beasts, these shall hate the whore, and if you can receive this, the whore is America, Babylon the Great, and the ten whores are those, uh, uh those nations that are part of the beast system. They all wore crowns and they all uh, slept with the whore. But now they're slowly, they understand, they're slowly seeing, wait a second, this whore ain't shit. 
And this is just the beginning. If they're able to go and 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 befriend, you know, the enemy, and they're supposed to be allies, what's to say? What things, further things they're going to do? And it's right here. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. You see? They're going to turn against Babylon the Great. This place is in it, it's on its decline, brothers. And it's so obvious. You got to be truly blinded. Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 29, where the Lord has uh, made your ears and your eyes fat, you know, that you ain't able to see it. But you have to be blind not to see it, man. Isaiah 24, let's get it. Verse 10. The city of confusion is broken down. Babylon the Great goes back to the word Baba, which means confusing, man. This is where you go back to the history of, the, of Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. All right? Babel, when you go into certain words that are related to the root words, Babylon, when you, you're a babbler, you're just talking out of your mouth, you're a fool, you know? This is a city of confusion. It's broken down. Every house is shut up, and this is where it's coming. See, this is slowly going to affect Babylon the Great. It's going to affect its commerce. It's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect its organization, corporation, food. Poverty is coming to Babylon the Great. This place is going to turn into a third world country as we see that all these nations and certain allies are actually leaving the dollar. And as you saw right there, you know, let's get let's get a good look at it again. That that is the president of France and the president of China. Look at that. <laughs> Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. All the partying, all the drinking, all the celebrating, all the songs and music and clubs and going out and being entertained. You know, that's going to come to an end. And we're slowly approaching down that road. Babylon the Great is slowly approaching down that road. In this, in verse twelve, in the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done, they shall lift up, they shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yashah, the God of Israel, in the eyes of the sea. And that's us through the Spirit, you know, the elect crying to the Lord, you know, of all the abominations of this whore, you know, because it tells you that in her cup, let's go back to it. In her cup, it was filled with filthiness, man. Okay, let's read verse 1. And there came out the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come here that I will show you on thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And that is America. You know, you go into the history, they have embassies everywhere. With whom the kings of the earth... Those are your allies. Those are your 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 your, your ten horns that slept with this this woman. Okay, they have committed fornication. See, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. See, Babylon the Great, the stronghold of the beast system, man has has ruled with democracy regulation. You know. With, with the power of the weapon, with their dollar that's being broken down. They have ruled the planet Earth. They have been bullying the planet Earth. Now these nations are waking up and say, wait a second. This man has been bullying us. This whore has been bullying us for too, for, 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 so, for too long. 
This is, this, uh, nah, 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 it's, it's something got to give, okay? The earth had been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried carry me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet collar beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup. This is the point. In a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. All right? And this is what we see today. Where you could come here in Babylon the Great. You know, you're born a, a, a little boy and then you grow up to be a woman, you know? You could do all sorts of things here. You could have surgery and get your, you know, your plumbing removed, man, you know? It's such abominable wickedness in this place, man. All right? So let's go. Let's, uh, I'm almost done here. So they said the mirth of the land is gone and the city is left desolation. The gate is smitten with destruction. When dust shall be in the midst of the land among the people, they shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning grapes and invention is done. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fire, the spirit, Yah Bashim Yahshah. For the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous? But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yeah, you damn Edomites, man. Yeah, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Being oppressed, being destroyed, being discriminated, put in slavery, dealt, oh, with the unrighteous decrees, with your new uh, bills that you're being signed. Patent 686, the new bill, anti TikTok bill, all these new democracy and unrighteous decrees that this devil has has written and has. Uh, the scripture talks about the strife of tongues, man, with this devil. That's dealing treacherously with the children of Israel. Okay? So, you know, now let's get on um, Habakkuk. It's the book of Habakkuk, because this is what's, where we're going. Habakkuk chapter 3. And let's, I'm going to just come back to that. Let's listen. The categories in the Yuan's future. On April 7th, China Shipbuilding Group received the largest single order for box ships in French history, further cementing the Yuan's position in the European market. At this critical juncture, Malaysia has proposed a Pan Asian gold backed digital reserve currency to replace the US dollar in Southeast Asia. This explains why global central banks, including Malaysia, are currently increasing their gold holdings. Gold is more stable relative to the US dollar, and net gold purchases by global central banks reached 125 tons in the first two months of this year, the highest level since 2010. China and Turkey are among the biggest players in the global gold market. China is... Well, wait a second. Turkey is so so-called ally? Or part of NATO, I think, or they they filled they filled out to be part of NATO. Oh, wait a second, what's going on here? <laughs> hey, man. World's largest buyer among central banks, according to the latest World Gold Council data, and the country is still increasing its gold purchases after acquiring a 55-year high of 1,136 tons last year. Central banks will continue to increase their gold reserves through 2023 indicating that gold will play a critical role as a strategic asset. Emerging markets will narrow the gold allocation gap with developed market central banks as their central banks lead the way in increasing gold reserves. Over the past 12 years, global central banks have purchased a total of 6,940 tons of gold. The pace of gold purchases by central banks has accelerated in recent years, indicating the trend towards de-dollarization of foreign exchange reserves. Recent data shows that the total amount of U.S. Treasuries held by global central banks has not grown in direct proportion to the amount of money printed in the U.S. since... I mean, if you can't see it, 
everybody's leaving the dollar. All right? And this is going to affect, what's going to happen is, it's going to affect Babylon the Great very much. This is why this place is going to become a third world country. Okay? You have a couple of weeks ago with Kenya, they went to go buy gas and uh, energy and oil from, from Saudi Arabia. All right, and they use the Ch the Chilean, something like that. It's called the Kenyan dollar, whatever the Chilean. They have not used the dollar, so the dollar has been what it has been the world's monetary fund, the world's top currency, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, the middleman. They have been using what this. They have been using the dollar as a weapon to keep on printing our money, the fiat. Toilet tissue, man. Toilet tissue. That's what it is. It's going to come to the point. That's what it is. It's not backed up since 1944. We're going to the history. It has not been uh, um, backed up. It has not been backed up. But see, back gold is backed up. It's valuable. You know, commodities, silver, stones, jewels, gems... And petroleum, oil is valuable, you know, but the fiat is not. And we know this and we see now the nations are waking up and they're, and they're, they're coming to a conclusion like, wait a second. This, 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 is, wait, 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 here we go. They're using this dollar as a weapon. They could come into our country, buy our product, whatever we have. They give us the dollar, the tissue. And with the that's not backed up, and they'll take our products, and this is what the Babylon, the Great America, has been doing for decades, hundreds of years, ruling on the planet Earth, just taking people's commodities and their products in exchange of what a fiat that's that's worth nothing. So this is why the new currency, this digital new currency that's coming together with uh, you have Russia and China coming together. You got all the nations coming together. You got a lot of nations coming to sign up with the BRICS, filling out to be part of the BRICS. Everybody's choosing size. And even allies of the U.S. are befriending and doing business with China. Okay, Let's just, this is this is this this place is done you know, we we need we need mercy because we're here. We're in Babylon the Great. Uh, Habakkuk three and sixteen. When I heard my belly tremble, my lips quiver at the voice. Rottenness enter into my bones, and I tremble in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. See, and this is the prophet Habakkuk, man. He saw the destruction. He saw the coming of our Lord. He saw the chariots. He saw a uh, 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 famine. He saw destruction, poverty. It, 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 to the point it even scared him. You know, it vexed his spirit. So imagine us that we're here. That's why we're going to need Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. That's why we need the spirit. We need wisdom. We need his knowledge that's going to keep us stable. Let's read what's going to happen. That I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. See, there's a war cry now. There's a battle that's being fought in a spiritual realm. There's a battle, a spiritual battle, that's being fought in a spiritual realm. And the Heavenly Father has commanded through the spirit of Yah Bashem Yahushah, his men, the prophets on the ground, here on planet earth, declaring war against this devil. Because he has declared war against us. Psalms 83 tells you that, you know, that he came together, they consulted together against thy people. Who's thy people? Israel. And we've been falling by the edge of the sword for so long. We've been destroyed. So now the Heavenly Father is going to return a favor and invade this devil with his troops. With what? The chariots, the angels. When you go in Revelation 12, this, I'm going to come back to Habakkuk thir, uh, 3, precept upon precept. Let's get Revelation 12. Okay? Let me get to the point. Verse 3. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great, a great, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. And a crown upon his head. Salak, I'm so sorry. I want to get to the point. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry. Uh, verse 7. Here we go. And there was war in heaven. Okay. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. See? So this devil in the nations, this military, this beast, this devil, he's going to try to attempt to combat and fight the Lord. When them chariots approved, this is the invasion. The Lord of Sabaoth. And this Habakkuk, he's seen this. Ezra saw the same thing as well. When we go to 2nd Ezra 13, it tells you the same thing. The Abishai came. The nations fought against him. You know, you had the jets. You had their military weapons. You know, the Lord in his power, his glorious return with the chariots. But it said that neither he lift up his hand nor lift up his arm to do nothing. And he just shot concentrated fire. And he said he just saw smoke and ashes everywhere. And I'm just paraphrasing. This is the same thing that John saw that Ezra saw. And prevail not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. They were being destroyed. All right? So the prophet, you know, let's go back to it. The prophet Habakkuk saw the same thing. It was, all right? <clears throat> so it says, and he would invade them with his troops. Verse 17, although the fig tree should not blossom, Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. No food. It's not going to be no food. There's going to be a famine in Babylon the Great. The Lord is going to smite this place. Your supermarkets, your corporations, your warehouses, they're slowly going to go into a decline. People are going to starve. People are going to fight for food. It's going to create havoc. People are going to turn into savages. You know, savages out here. And that is Jacob's trouble. This is why we're going to need Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We're going to need the angels, our brothers, to protect us. We're going to need this wisdom to keep us stable. You know? So, let's go listen to a little bit. I'm going to end it through the spirit. Because I do have to go back to... I'm in plantation right now. Hold the on. introduction of several rounds of quantitative easing in 2008. In contrast, central banks' gold reserves have continued to rise. China is a significant player in the de-dollarization trend. Between January 2022 and the end of January this year, China not only continued to increase its gold reserves, but also liquidated 17% of its U.S. Treasury position. In the past 13 months, China has sold a net amount of U.S. Treasuries, except for one month. Its total U.S. Treasury holdings have fallen below $900 billion for four consecutive months a net sell-off of nearly 35%, or $457.3 billion from the peak of its position in November 2013. And that's also going to affect Babylon the Great. Okay? Because China has been liquidating U.S. Treasuries. That's going to affect the economy as well. So the Lord is doing a thing to this place. He's returning back the favor for all the wickedness he had done. For all the riches, okay? All the riches that he has gained. And he has gained this through bloodshed. As scripture said, let's get it real quick. You know, this man has not earned nothing that he has. All right? Everything about this man is through bloodshed, through the sword. Because that was his gift. Psalm 73. Let's get to the point. I'm going to go to the point. 
Okay, let me see. Boy, let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go. I'm going to start at verse 10. Psalm 73 and 10. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Oh, yeah, in Jeremiah 49, it goes in into us Israelites having to drink the cup of the Lord. And that cup was for disobedience, man. That cup, you know, was slavery, being punished by Esau, you know, being the tail, you know, being at the bottom, going back into the curses, you know, our lives hanging in doubt, our minds being smitten, our bodies being smitten with all types of disease and ailments and sicknesses. We had to drink that cup. You know, being hung, lynched, castrated, being burnt alive, you know, and the list goes on. Even to this day where this man has actually promoted to kill us with GMO, chemtrails, defrostration, giving you his uh, uh, Maxine, his poison, deceiving the world, you know, and the list goes on. This devil resume is as long as the earth itself, going around even more than more times. So the sins of this man has has actually entered into the has actually reached the heavens. So as the scriptures say, verse eleven, and they say, "How do the Most High know?" This is the pride of Esau. That's why the Lord said, O oh, most proud, Jeremiah 50, I think it is. He said, O oh, thou most proud, talking about this devil and Babylon the Great. And the Lord goes on saying, I am against thee. The Lord is against this place. Because this man speaks lofty, he speaks against the Heavenly Father with blasphemy. So it says, verse 11, and they say, How do the Most High know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. The ungodly, the Edomites, the Esau, the elites, the wicked. All right? And this is what they have done. Now the Lord is returning a favor. He's stripping away all the riches from you because you have gained riches ungodly. You are the ungodly that have gained the riches of the world. You have taken everything. You have pillaged the nations. You have bullied the nations with your fiat tissue money. Money. You have bullied the world. And now the Lord is stripping you away of your power slowly. You're becoming weak as this nations. As the scripture said, as they, as he became weak as us. Isaiah 14, I think it is. Let's listen. This move aims to reduce exposure to the dollar and to promote greater global use of the yuan. China-related institutions have announced a total increase of 120 tons of gold reserves for five consecutive months, breaking a previous streak of 38 months without disclosing an increase in gold reserves. This suggests that China is accelerating its de-dollarization by replacing its gold reserves. In particular, China has started to rely more on the yuan in areas such as commodity settlement and oil currency, which has surprised the market. Other countries are following suit in de-dollarization. France, Germany, Belgium, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, and Israel, who are U.S. allies, have accelerated the liquidation of U.S. treasuries. European countries have even taken over the banner of de-dollarization from Japan and have started refusing to buy U.S. treasuries. Recent data reveals that both France and Saudi Arabia have sold off a significant amount of U.S. debt. France, one of the largest sellers of U.S. debt in Europe, has sold off $62.1 billion worth. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia has sold up to 10% of its U.S. debt holdings, equivalent to $18.4 billion, compared to its peak holdings in 2020. This suggests that Saudi Arabia is moving towards de-dollarization and increasing its investment in the Chinese market, with a focus on yuan assets to reduce reliance on the dollar and U.S. assets. In addition, 
yeah, Saudi Arabia is supposed to be an ally of the U.S. So what's going on? There's a power shift, brothers. Hey, the Lord's doing a wondrous thing, man. Babylon, Babylon is falling. John saw this. The prophet saw this. So, you know, I hope this was edifying through the spirit of your heart by Shimmy I was shy. Lord willing, you was edified, you know. And um, shalom, brothers. Shalom.